Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to have an introduction to logic. And logic is really important in math, but it's also important in really just anything in life. So you can apply this skill to just a lot of things. Anytime anything you're trying to prove some any time you're trying to prove something, you want to be logical. If that's an argument with a friend, if that's a mathematical proof, you need to use logic. And so in math specifically, they can help us do proofs and understand difficult concepts. So that's what we're going to focus on here. And but first, I just want to start with what is logic? It says if P then Q. So what this means is if X happens, then Y is going to happen. So th there's a hypothesis in the if, cl if clause. So P is the hypothesis. I'll write that here. That's kind of like, well, what is going to happen? And then the then clause, that's Q. Well, if that first thing happens, what follows it? And we call this the conclusion. So we're saying if the hypothesis occurs, well, then the conclusion will occur. So the best way to think about this is to just look through an example. And this is a non-mathematical example. It's just to get you guys used to seeing this form. And remember, it says if P, then Q. First thing we need to do, first thing I want to do is identify my hypothesis. And that's going to be what comes right after it. I mean, if, so if it rains. So the hypothesis is it rains. And then we're saying, well, if it rains, the conclusion to that rain happening is school gets canceled. So we don't go to school. All right, we don't go to school. So that's the conclusion. We're saying if the hypothesis happens, we don't go to school today. And so now I want you to think, so that's the statement and that's where we start. But now we get into this, let me just write this as P and then this is gonna be Q. But now let's look back up here. We have this thing called the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive. We get all of these, we derive all of these things from knowing the P and the Q. So the converse says, if Q, then P. So I think of the converse as the reverse. So we're really just switching everything around. So in this first example, let's look again, just on the, at the start where it says, if it rains, we will not go to school today. Well, I'm saying the hypothesis, the P is it rains, and the conclusion is we don't go to school today. So now when I form the converse, it's if Q, then P. So it's going to be if this part, if we don't go to school today, so if we will not go to school today, well, then P, then it rains. So that's where that comes from. So that's how you form the converse. Now let's look back at the inverse. This says, if not P, then not Q. So basically we're just adding a not in front of the original statement. So if I have the original statement, if I just make both of the, the hypothesis and the conclusion um, not true, so a negative, then I have the, the inverse. The inverse is the complete opposite basically. So if it does not rain because that's not P, that's saying, well, we're taking the hypothesis and we're saying it does not happen, so it does not equal. So if it does not rain, then we will go to school because that's the same as saying we will not not go to school today. So that's saying we will go to school. So that is how you get the inverse. Then lastly is a word that you may have never heard of before and that is the contrapositive. And this one is if not Q, then not P. So one way you can think about this is looking at the converse and then making them negative. That's one way to do it. Or you can look at the inverse and then switch the sides. So you can do two different things. So in our case, it says if not Q, then not P. So this is going to say if we go to school today because that is not Q, then it did not rain because that is not P. So those are the four. That's how you produce the logical statements. That's what I'll call these, the logical statements. And then what you have to figure out is that they don't all have to be true. So you can have situations where the first statement is true and then the third is not. And you really have to be able to analyze, well, which ones of these are true? And can I say all of them are true? You have to analyze the truth value. Is it true or is it false? Because in some situations it won't be. Let's take a look at these and just see. Um, if it rains, then we will not go to school today. That could be true. You could have uh, a delay or something if it rained really hard. The converse says, if we will not go to school today, then it rains. So is that true? If we will not go to school today, then it rains. I would say no, because that is implying that the only reason you would not go to school is if it is that it rained. So you're saying, if we will not go to school today, then it rains? Well, what if it snowed? That would, You still would not go to school, but that does not mean that it rained. So you wouldn't go to school, but then it 
um, snowed instead. So I would say that is not necessarily true, the converse. Then another one says, if it does not rain, then we will go to school. Well, for the same reason, I said, well, what if it snows? That does not rain. So if it does not rain, well, that has not happened. It did not rain, but we still are not going to school. So the inverse is also not true. Then lastly, the contrapositive, if we go to school today, it did not rain. Well, that's true. If we're at school, we know it didn't rain. We also know it didn't snow or anything like that, but we know it didn't rain. If we're at school, we know it didn't rain. So those are kind of the truth values, the kind of questions you need to ask yourself when you're considering, is this statement true or false? So let me write that. This one would be true. This one would be false, false, and true. And the reason is because that does not include all possible reasons that you would not go to school because it could be snowing or tornadoes or anything like that. So hopefully that provides a little bit of an introduction to logic. We're going to get into kind of the rules of logic and eventually you're going to be able to make these uh, converse, inverse, contrapositives by yourself and apply them to mathematical rules and formulas. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.